Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. Uh, I, I've accomplished absolutely nothing today, and if I don't do something, I'm going to regret it later. So I thought we would come to the, our tutorial playthrough. I think uh, the, like the smart thing to do for us right now is to immediately head back out. We've looted this one house, which um, on the map menu, we can mark this as explored. If we hover over, if we highlight that particular tile and hit Shift E, it will toggle that to explore and that grays out that tile. So we know just at a quick reference, like if we go over here and we clear a bunch of stuff, we would mark it as explored. That way if we're ever like forget where we are and we take a quick glance, oh, there's a hardware store. We don't think that it's been unlooted. That way we know. So that's a little quick tidbit there that you should definitely take advantage of. Um, I think it would be smartest for us to go right back out and start looting again. Again, we saw survivor zombies in this area, so it's a little dangerous to go out during the daylight, which is something that we've done because we're in an isolated area where we knew we could safely approach the town most likely. Um, obviously, depending on your start, you would not venture out until the darkness because it's so much more beneficial for you to to move in the darkness. But I don't I don't think I want to do that. I think what I want to do in this episode, we're going to talk about the sorting system. Sorry, I should have immediately said that so that people watching the video would know immediately. There's a sorting system that was added to Cataclysm, which is, uh, you know, it sounds very basic. It's something that, you know, you think really easily like, oh, well, I would just separate into categories. Yeah, and you can drop things manually onto different piles if that's what interests you. But setting up the sorting system saves you so, so much work. And it was really flooring to me. I went on Discord recently and was talking to people about the sorting system. And there was a huge number of people who said, you know, I don't even use it. I never use it. it you know, I never learned how to use it. I don't want to use it. It's just I just drop everything on different piles. It's no big deal. It's so so good like you need to use the sorting system um so what i'm talking about is like let's say we had let's just pick up some random stuff here um let's scroll down so we get other categories as well just so we have a handful okay probably not the 54 protein rations and we'll just pick up some random stuff okay so if you were doing this manually we have an inventory full of stuff so you might say like, okay, well, here's my fire. So I want my tools pile to be kind of close to my fire. So I'll go ahead and drop my tools. But you know, some of these tools I don't really need, like our emergency blankets really tools. So I don't really want to drop those. So I'll just drop this stuff. And then we'll put over here is where we'll put blankets and clothing and stuff like that. So we'll put that over here and we'll come over here. We want our food pile near our thing, but you know, food and drink are both listed under food so we can't just select everything we have to go through and manually verify that we're not dropping any beverages because I want my drink pile to be over here and I want my book pile so you can do things manually and that is mostly fine but if we use the sorting system we can actually have the game make a lot of those decisions for us and then simply press a few buttons and have everything get sorted out without us having to manually sort through every bit of food and drink to make sure they're separate and separate medications from like hardcore narcotics and that kind of stuff. And so in order to access the sorting system, we hit shift Y, the capital Y key. This is the zone manager tool. It pops up and it's pretty straightforward. There's the ability to add, remove, um, temporarily turn off those item groups, um, move up and down in this list, show and hide certain things. Um, and I'm not sure really how map works with this, so I'm not really going to touch on that. But this is the zone manager tool, and what we're going to do, we're going to add. So we're going to press A to add a new zone. It brings up this menu, and it says, hey, what kind of zone do you want? Well, pretty much in the early game, I focus on three main zones. I focus on wood, food, and drink. Those are the three that I usually make first. So let's make a wood pile. And you'll see as we hover over them, it will tell you what these things are. Um, so if we go to wood, this is a destination for firewood and items that can be used as such. So we're going to hit enter and it will prompt us to name our zone. I usually leave these to default. So we hit enter again. And now we're in the, we're in a menu where we can move through the map. So we're going to head over here to where we want our wood pile to be. And we're going to hit enter. Now it will prompt you on how big you want the zone. So at this point it has a flashing box. 
We could make this whole section wood, but I usually only make one tile. So we're just gonna hit enter again, and you'll see it's now listed in our, our, our list of zones that we have a wood pile. In order to save this, we have to hit escape, and it will prompt us to save the changes. Make sure that you hit yes, because if you add a whole bunch of zones and then hit no by mistake or hit enter quickly through the menu, it will undo all of the zones that you've added. So now, if we take our wood off of this pile and we put it over here, let's just make, um, okay, so before we do that, let's go back to the zone manager and we're gonna add another zone. This time we're gonna make an unsorted zone. The unsorted zone is the zone that it will pull all your items from. So basically when you come back looting, you have all these zones set up of like, hey, I want my tools over here, my drinks over here, and you have an unsorted zone specified. Then you drag all your new stuff or drop all your new stuff on the unsorted pile, hit the sort button, and it will sort out everything possible. So unsorted is just like, this is where all my stuff is, and it's unsorted, I need you to sort it from there. So we're gonna make this pile our unsorted pile. We'll move that later because it's not in a great spot and you kind of need to be able to know where your unsorted zone is. You can also make that as big as you want, I believe. So if we were to add um, an unsorted zone and we wanted to sort everything in this building, we could just set up a zone that encompasses the whole building and it would sort everything. I don't like doing things that way, but some people do. So let's save this. So now we've made a wood pile, um, which is also our firewood source, which I should have made a separate video for. But um, And now we have an unsorted pile as well. So now if I hit Shift and O, the capital O key, it will give us the option to sort out our loot. Uh, I don't really use the other actions here. There's the chop planks. It also has stuff for farming and that kind of thing. We're gonna go to sort my loot and you'll see time passes and it, it gives us messages about dropping our planks. And what we did was go through this whole pile and pull out all the wood bits. So if we come over here, now I don't love this because sometimes it, it does things I don't want it to do. Like if we go and look at our pile, you'll see it put all of our planks and all of our pine boughs into this wood pile. I don't really like having my pine boughs in there. So I'm gonna grab those out. Is there other wood in this pile? A wood saw? No. Is there splinters? No. So it moved all of our wood out of the unsorted pile and stacked it over here. Now most of the time you will have more than one zone, so this will take a, uh, depending on how many items you have, it can take a very long time. Um, and usually you will be sorting multiple things at, at once. So let's set up some other zones and I'll give you my advice on why I do things this way. Number one, I like having a food zone. So we'll go down here to food and we will create a food zone. Now I like, you, you really need to have your food and drink pretty close to your fire. There's a pretty decent range on crafting, but I do prefer having them a little bit close. So let's um, put right here, we'll put our food zone Let's make another zone. Again, just hitting A to add a zone. And we're gonna make a drink pile. Now, I like to keep this a little further away. And the important thing is that you don't overlap these tiles. If you overlap food and drink into one pile, the list when you go to eat something will be very, very long and you will have to navigate through beverages and food. So I recommend keeping them separated. So we'll put this one over here. What else would we need? Well, uh, books are important. Books are important for crafting. I, again, like to keep these near the fire, so we'll just put them where we're standing right now. We'll add another zone. We'll go down to, okay, food, drink. We'll make a tools pile, which I also like to be near the fire. I really like having my stuff clustered near the fire. I know that you don't really need it to be. You can craft at a pretty decent radius. I think it's like six tiles around you um, and so you don't need to keep everything really close together but I really do tend to um, and I like that uh, just personal preference there of course we can make tons of other groups you'll see we have things like um, perishable food and drinks so what we can do is set up uh, separate categories so only our canned food goes to one location and our more perishable food non-shelf stable food will go to a different location same with beverages you can separate clean clothing from filthy clothing. Um, we could set up a spot for armor or guns or ammunition. We don't have a lot of those things, so I'm not really concerned about that. And so I think that's probably all. We'll set up a medication pile, which is, I believe drugs is what we're looking for. Medication. 
So we'll just put this over here because that doesn't really need to be used for crafting. And I think that's good for now. So let's escape and save our changes. This time, if I hit Shift O and I sort my loot, we're gonna get multiple piles appearing around us. That's gonna really quickly go through all of our items and anything that can fit. Hello, raccoon. Why are you in my, my building? Uh, it's going to quickly, as quickly as possible, it's going to sort through all those things, pick out the items that are necessary that fit those categories, and then separate them. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to murder this raccoon since it's free food. So we'll do a quick butchery. Grab those scraps of meat. We didn't get very much. Oh, we were supposed to full butcher him. Well, oh well. We'll drag the rest of the stuff we don't want outside just so that we don't have a corpse in our building. I don't really like the idea of having a corpse in our building. Now we have scraps of meat in our inventory for later. Um, so you'll see it takes quite a long time depending on how many items you have accumulated and how many unsorted tiles there are, how much stuff there is to actually sort. Now most of the time it's not so bad. If you haul tons of stuff at once it will accrue quickly. Like we've looted a, a full house and as well as this building itself. And so when we sorted, we had to go through multiple buildings worth of stuff. Sometimes when you come back to base and you drop, you know, one inventory worth of stuff and you sort, it's going to take you very little amount of time. But it is important to know that time passes as this is happening. If you have safe mode on that kind of stuff, it will prompt you, um, you know, it'll stop you if you if you're in danger. Like that raccoon was not dangerous to us, so it didn't prompt me to stop. But there will be situations where you try to sort and it'll say, hey, you spotted an enemy. Do you want to continue sorting? So you don't have to worry too, too much as long as you're paying attention and not skipping message prompts. But time does pass. And like in this situation where we would maybe want to head out again in the daylight, spending a lot of time sorting and digging through piles, it, it will eat time out of your character's life. Now, the other important thing that I wanted to talk about with these zones is that you can add custom zones. There's a lot you can do with this menu. This is not an all-inclusive tutorial. I just wanted to talk about sorting things specifically. You can do things with your base camp, which I never do because I don't play with NPCs. I'm not sure how construction blueprint works. You can set up farm plots. What this would do is set up specific, so we can. We don't have any seeds, so we can't really test this. Um, to show you how this works, but it will prompt you on what kind of seed you want, and then it will let you set up a zone for that the same way you would do for looting items. Then when you go to sort using Shift O, it would actually prompt you to till the farm plots as well as plant the farm plots. So this is a really handy way to do a bunch of farming without constantly pressing, okay, activate my dig tool, okay, till the ground, okay, uh, examine the plot, Okay, select the seed for that I want to plant here. Okay, we're done. Let's move on to the next one and do it over and over and over. This lets you do that with very few key presses and it's very quick. Um, so I do recommend that you use this when you're farming. Fishing spot, I don't really understand because, I, again, I think this has to do with NPCs and I don't really know how that works. So it's not all inclusive. Same with some of this stuff down here. I just don't know all of this stuff. Firewood, yeah, like, so I don't know everything about this menu. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, this is all NPC stuff. I just don't know how how that works. So, yeah, uh, what we will talk about is the custom zone. Uh, custom zone allows you to create uh, a specific zone. Let's say we're looking at this list and we're saying, you know what? There's not a batteries uh Spot. I don't understand why isn't there a batteries tab? Well, we can make one. We would go to custom loot zone and it brings up a menu explaining what to do. Uh, and basically all we would do is type, um, I think literally like, so this, this is based on the item's name. So literally if we just put bat, uh, any item that has this in the name would be placed on this pile. So for us, this would work just fine. Secondarily, you can remove certain things, like let's say we, we said battery, but anything that has the word light in it, that way we could prevent light batteries from being put into this pile. Um, we can uh, apparently set up, okay, instead of using the item's name, we can do it by category. We can search for its materials. So I could set up um, a zone that puts all of our iron items together. 
We could set it up by quality so I could say all of our screw driving items on one pile. N is notes, I don't know what that means. And then disassembled would say, okay, if I wanted to disassemble for, um, I don't know, sheet metal, uh, I could set this up so that anything that disassembled for sheet metal, this way, let's say we have a huge base, we have hundreds of items, and we're looking for like, oh man, I really need power converters. I could search for power and it would pro and pull items out that have this in them, uh, and then we could use that to quickly disassemble. Hopefully that all makes sense. For the time being, let, let's set up a battery just to show you how that works. Um, like I said, we go to custom zone. We would just type in battery. Uh, and then it will prompt us to name it and we'll set up a, a battery pile over here and we'll save and now when we sort it should pull out all of our batteries and there you go it separated all of our batteries so now if we pull these off again and we change that zone let's remove our custom loot zone remove and we do the same thing custom and we'll go battery again Oh, oops, I messed it up. Okay, let's try this again. Add custom zone. We're gonna type battery, but we're going to negate anything that has the word disposable in it. So let's drop this here and sort again. Sort my loot. Oh, it did not work. Why did you not work? We have batteries that are not disposable. Hmm. Remove, add, custom battery okay just bat maybe maybe I typed battery wrong separate multiple items that's probably why minus to exclude items place minus dispose Let's try this hmm why did you not work sort sort my loot Okay, I probably just typed something wrong. So you'll see here we got uh, two of our batteries and then all of our disposable batteries were neglected from being put on that pile. So it, it, it did not count our, two dispo our three disposable batteries. So I'm not sure why that didn't work the first time. I do like having a battery zone set up, um, but it's not something that is often comes up sometimes. Like by the time you get far enough in the game, you know, remove, by the time you get far enough into the game that you can have a lot of batteries and get them charging and everything, you usually just leave them in your battery charger and it's not a big deal. The other aspect of the sorting system that I wanted to talk about is that you can attach this to vehicle parts. So, uh, there are no vehicles nearby. So, once you get to a point where you have a vehicle, let's say we have this vehicle, we can attach a zone to this vehicle. We can say, okay, I want this basket to be food only. So we set up a food zone and put it here. And when we select this, it will say, do you want to bind this to this particular vehicle part? And you would say yes. So from then on, whenever we would sort food near that item, it would drop food into that vehicle part. If you don't bind it to a vehicle part, it will drop it on the ground and it doesn't work the same way. If you bind it to the vehicle part, it will drop it into the trunk or storage compartment or whatever it is, and you can attach it that way. So by the time you get progressed in the game, a lot of us end up being nomadic towards the mid to late game, just because you get, I mean, once you run out of stuff to do in your area, you end up being nomadic, you get a big old vehicle going, and it's really important that you sort directly um, into those vehicle tiles that will save you a ton of time. So I'm trying to think, is there anything else that we really need to talk about in this, I really maybe should have done research into the NPC aspect of the sorting menu, but the reality is I just don't use NPCs and I don't really like NPCs. Like that is something, I don't know if we discussed that, but when I started this tutorial, I don't have a lot of interest in playing with NPCs. We started next to one and I thought like, okay, well, you know, we can maybe work with this guy if we can get him to come to our side, but I'm not going to be building a uh, faction camp or anything like that in this uh, tutorial playthrough because I don't know how to do those things and I really don't enjoy playing with NPCs. So for the most part, that NPC stuff is going to be pretty lackluster and most of this functionality in the zone manager is NPCs. Uh, like we can now get NPCs to work on our vehicles for us, take apart vehicles for us, that kind of stuff. I imagine it's very straightforward. Um, so like if I went to a vehicle deconstruction zone, I would just set up a zone and say, hey, 
anything parked out here gets deconstructed. Uh, and then I guess I park my vehicle there and they would just come and deconstruct it when it was time for them to do that. I, I imagine it's that straightforward, but I really, really can't speak to that in too much detail. So I think that's it for this episode. Hopefully that all made sense and was a, uh, a good tutorial. Um, so that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll be back with more tutorial content in the near future and I'll see you next time.